It's a new season of Cabela's Sporting Dog Adventures. Our season is full of great hunts and high-flying adventures. This week, we have a hunt from Saskatchewan for waterfall that doesn't disappoint. We have lots of birds, a few tips on running your dog in the field, and some new segments this season that start now on Cabela's Sporting Dog Adventures. Oh boy, good dog. Hey, pretty mama, go and grab the scatter gun. Rommel's looking like he's got one more good run. His hips are a little shaky, but his heart's still true. Oh, how that dog loves hunting with me and you. Sporting dog adventures, run, boy, run. Everything you need is here under the sun. Everything you need is here under the sun. Last season on the show, I made my first trip north of the border to Saskatchewan, Canada for four days of intense waterfowl hunting. One thing I learned was that scouting was really important. There are lots of birds, but the birds also had lots of options on where to feed and where to roost. Our scouting constantly had us on the X and made for some great hunts. The best parts of the trip were not only the amount of birds in the area, but also the diverse wildlife. The rolling hills of Saskatchewan provided a great backdrop for our hunts with fantastic sunrises and varied cover. This week we're hunting with friends Tim Skiba and Mike LaRue from Mobile Strong, as well as Brad Heidel from Pheasants Forever. Our dogs that are with us in the field are a Drothar named Nettie and a Labrador Retriever named Castle. It was the final day of our hunt and we made our way back near a pond where the birds were roosted. The Vortex was redeployed. This was a new weapon we unveiled on the trip, and it was beyond effective. hit too. We set up adjacent to a wetland and concealed ourselves in the cattails. The morning flight wasn't filled with large groups of birds, but we had lots of action with singles. I gotta lead them more. And that pointer's a duck dog. We're getting sneak attacked. Yeah, I let them. I haven't been leading them. Take them. Our morning hunt was going well. We had lots of action, quality dog work, and good company. Coming up on Cabela's Sporting Dog Adventures, the hunt from Saskatchewan continues, and we'll let you know how you can win prizes by participating with us on our social media. Cabela's Sporting Dog Adventures is brought to you by Cabela's, Heavy Shot, Hi Viz, Kansas Department of Wildlife, Parks and Tourism, Big Dog Mowers, Conquest Sense, Hadles Game Calls, Headwater Seat Covers, Liberty Safe, Mech Shooting Sports, Mobile Strong, Pheasants Forever, Real Tree Dog Food, Vanishing Paradise, Tacticam, and Soggy Acres Retrievers. 
This training tip is brought to you by these fine sponsors. Welcome to this week's training tip. This week, we're gonna teach you how to do something commonly known as scent tracking or a scent track. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our bumper, we're gonna take our Conquest training scent, here we have pheasant, we're gonna apply it to the bumper, then we're gonna go out in the field, we're gonna slowly drag this along and show a young dog how to properly scent trail. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is our normal clothing and shoes has a lot of scent on it. So when you do this, have your scent-free boots on, apply your scent, and then let's head to the field. We're gonna take the scented side, put it down on the grass, and then start to pull it along the ground. You wanna make sure that you are not putting the wind in the dog's face, as in putting this upwind, because the dog will then smell the bumper and not rely on its nose to do the tracking. We're gonna take this about 20 feet, and we're gonna put it in an area where the dog can't see it, which is behind some grass, and then we're gonna go get our dog. We've got Clay here, first time on the scent drag. We're gonna take him, we're gonna walk him along and just let him smell it until he ultimately finds the bumper and gets his reward, which is a retrieval. And what's gonna happen with the young dog, he gets off scent, you can see him using his nose. They aren't always gonna be on the trail, so you gotta give them time. Let the dog work, let them figure it out. He's definitely got scent, and there it is, he found it. What you can do then is make this fun for him. Hey, hey go get it, buddy. And as you work with a young dog, here, good boy. Make it more complex, make your scent trails longer, and before you know it, he's ready for the field. That's this week's training tip. Now back to the hunt. Good boy. We're sitting kind of running traffic in between. Birds keep getting up and landing. There's a lot of water. You can actually see birds up behind us now. And what they're doing is they're kind of hanging out on the hillside, stretching their wings, and then going back down in the water. Occasionally, we're getting a little bit of action over here where they're coming over, giving us a look but we're hoping here now that we're getting to feeding time that uh, they stop landing in the water and come over and visit us. Here we go. There's something about the vortex. It just gives you the edge in getting those hard birds to commit. Shoot them. Take them. They seemed a little high. I didn't think they were going to finish, though. What do you think? Was that all right? The dogs are squirrely today. Squirrely. Squirrely critters. At one point, we had geese that were working into range. This was the first group that we were going to get a shot at. We're waiting for a few more yards till they're in range. Unfortunately, one person from our group called the shot a little bit early. I think they're closer to us than them. So we were losing birds to this pond here. We didn't move our spread, we moved just the vortex. Getting a little aggressive, we're gonna see what we can pull off here and try to, uh, try to get us some birds. Got Brad Heidel. He is a serious duck hunter. He is along with this idea. And he's got his game face on. So it's time to get ready. We're gonna dig in, we're just gonna get in the cattails. We're gonna try to take some ducks up. And now let's head to the puppy kennel, brought to you by Phytophyte. Welcome to the Whelping Box. We are going to do a new feature here on Sporting Dog Adventures TV, which follows the lifespan of a puppy from birth to going home to their new families. This is Micah. She is one of our younger females in the breeding program. And we actually think she's in the early stages of labor right now. She's uh, panting pretty hard, um, looks a little distressed. So she's about due in two or three days or so, maybe even sooner. Her uh, whelping box is actually something that my husband constructed. It's out of a poly plank so we can clean them really, really good. We have underneath us here a carpet which actually helps the puppies be able to grasp on as they move to and from the mother to drink milk. We put a heat lamp in the whelping box for the puppies because until they're about two weeks old, they can't regulate their own body temperature. So the heat lamp helps to keep them warm. 
So continue to follow our Welcome to the Whelping Box segment where you will get to watch the puppies from pregnancy to birth as they grow and mature and finally go home with their own families. Well, we're at the end of our morning hunt. Kind of broke the golden rule. We hunted the same place twice. Didn't get quite the results that we had the other day. Ultimately, we moved back to this pond with just the vortex because there were a bunch of birds landing in it. But by the time we did that, the flight was over. It's the last day. We're having a great hunt. We're going to hit it hard this afternoon. We got to get out and scout. So I hope you guys enjoyed this part of the show. Stay tuned for more high flying adventures after this. This segment of Cabela Sporting Dog Adventures is brought to you by these fine sponsors. And now it's time for this week's Kids Corner. Welcome to Kids Corner. I'm here with Sean from Mech Shooting Sports, and he's going to be teaching me about the parts of a shotgun shell. Cal, do you know what goes into a shotgun shell? Gunpowder, pellets, um, and a lot more stuff. And a lot more stuff. That's, that's correct. I'm going to show you everything in detail what's going to go into a shell. This is the type of shell we're going to use. Yep. We're going to shoot an ounce and eighth load. Mm -hmm. Type of gunpowder we're going to use. It lists out the type, type of primer, the wad, and the amount of grains, also by feet per second. So we have our spent shell. Mm -hmm. It's one we picked up. You can see where the firing pin hit it. Yep. What we're going to have to do is knock out the old primer, but also resize, and that's going to be done station one. After that, we're going to put a primer in the shell. So that's when the firing pin hits it. It's going to light the, the gunpowder inside, and then push the complete load out the barrel. Mm -hmm. In the third station, what we're going to do is going to put our powder charge in. We're going to insert the wad. We're going to push the bar back over and drop our shot. And everything's in there. All we have to do is close it. Okay. Pretty easy. Are you ready for your turn? Yeah. First, we take out the old primer. Yep. Bring the hand all the way down. All the way. Keep going. There you go. Back up. And then next, we put in the new primer. Correct. Perfect. What do we do next? We put in the gunpowder and the BBs. Put in the gunpowder. Go ahead and bring the handle back up. Now what separates the gunpowder from the shot? The wad. All right, we're gonna put the wad in. Bring it down slow. Yep, all the way home. And then we put the BBs in. Correct. All the way over. There you go. Handle back up. So everything's in the shot. What do we have to do next? Then we have to close the shotgun shell. All right, so we do our starter crimp. And then what do we do last? We close the shotgun shell. All right. Perfect. Hey, Sean, thanks for teaching me how to reload a shotgun shell. And this is the end of this week's Kids Corner. And back to the hunt. After our morning hunt, we went out scouting. We picked a spot in the afternoon that was adjacent to a pond where there were thousands of ducks roosting during the day. And from there, our hunt started out with a bang. You call him, Brad. Boy, I smoked the one from a long way. A large front was moving in, and there were birds of all kinds circling our area. We had birds coming off their midday roost and working over the spread. The dogs did well, with a few exceptions where we had some breaking issues. Nice! Heel. Sit. And now it's time for this week's Conservation Corner, brought to you by Vanishing Paradise. Certain issues define our times. 
For waterfowl hunters, the loss of our wetland habitat, in my opinion, is the conservation issue of the future. Nowhere is this more pronounced than in the Gulf Coast area. As many as 13 million birds spend time along the Gulf Coast each year. These are birds that fly up north through the Central and Mississippi flyways. These are the same birds that we hunt on the show. But the wetlands these birds use are disappearing at an astonishing rate. About a football field an hour on average. This is my good friend Andy McDaniels with the Vanishing Paradise Program and the National Wildlife Federation. Over the next 11 weeks, Andy's going to explain what has happened to the critical wetlands of the Gulf Coast and how we can make a difference. Go to vanishingparadise.org slash sporty dog to learn more. Coming up on Cabela Sporting Dog Adventures, training issue pops up during our hunt. We'll give you some tips Panel. for some infield corrections, and then we'll wrap up our hunt from Saskatchewan, Canada. Hey Cabela Sporting Dog Adventures fans, we've got a great contest this year with our social media. Comment on Facebook and Twitter about our episodes. We're gonna pick 12 to 16 of these comments to put into our program during October 1st to January 1st. If your comment is used, you'll be eligible for prizes from our great sponsors. These winners will be announced weekly right here on our Big Dog Mower. This product review is brought to you by these fine sponsors. As you can see, my dogs love to train. You can enhance their training and their experience in the field with Conquest Sense Sticks. Lucy will play all day, so why not take advantage of that and put some natural scent on there from Conquest Sense Sticks so she knows the quarry she's looking for in the field. Conquest works great because it's a wax-based scent. You simply apply it to the bumper, and then you can take it out in the field and use it over and over until it runs out after, oh, I usually rescent them about once a week. Conquest Scent Sticks has a full line of scents for the avid trainer. Whether you're looking at doing upland, waterfowl, or your houndsman, they have a scent that will help your dogs perform better in the field. Take it from Lucy. Conquest Scent Sticks makes training a lot more fun. What do you think, Lucy? <laughs> Check them out at their website, conquestscents.com. Take them. Breaking is common in dogs, especially young dogs first hitting the field. They will at times go self-employed, like in this last part of the hunt. When this happens, you have to make some infield corrections. What you first want to do would be to talk to the dog as the birds are coming in. Reinforce the sit or kennel command while the birds are working, and maybe not even shoot so that you can make sure that your dog stays put. Here. If the dog does bolt, here. use your e-collar to correct the dog. Hit here. the dog with the e-collar and call him back, no. saying here. And you can even reinforce it if they start to lurch forward by just telling them to sit and using your collar. Remember, it's a huge responsibility to have a dog in the field. You have to be a handler first and a hunter second. Look at him, here he comes. He says, Hipski, shoot me. Oh yeah, I think so, don't you? No, let, let it go, let it go. This is gonna be it right here. Oh yeah, we got him. So we're in a little bit of a lull. We've had a lot of birds moving around. I am hoping they get off the roost. We can hear them quacking behind us, but there's some weird weather. A lot of snow squalls. We had a lot of wind before, now the wind died down. We got about an hour left, so hopefully we get a couple of big groups to work. Still fun, beautiful, beautiful scenery. I mean, you look at the clouds and everything, it's just gorgeous out here. Shoot him. With daylight fast leaving us, our hope was that one big group would work and end our hunting style. Shoot him. Hey, we're at the end of our hunt. We saw a lot. We ended a little bit early, 
because we're sitting really close to the roost and the wind is down. The rest of our crew is here tomorrow. So we are headed back to the States, but we had a wonderful hunt. Saw a lot of birds. Castle did a great job. We got to work on him on breaking a little bit, but uh, he did a lot of good retrieves. Hope you guys enjoyed this week's show. Stay tuned for next week's High Flying Adventures. Next week on Cabela's Sporting Dog Adventures, we head to the great state of Kansas for the annual governor's hunt. He's down. Teams are comprised of four hunters, and I have the honor of hitting the field with two of my sons and good friend Andy McDaniels. Roosters fill the sky next week on Cabela's Sporting Dog Adventures. Close captioning provided by Hadel's Game Calls. Why should you get puppy from Soggy Acres Retrievers? Because they're great hunters in the field. Soggy Acres puppies have great temperaments and they'll also become your best friend. And the number one reason, they're cutie pies. Conquest is a full life. <laughs> Can't work like this. No. Stop, stop, you're wrecking the whole film. You're wrecking the filming. Conquest is a whole. It's a good outtake.